Hello, fellow dusters. Welcome to Mars. This could be your very first playthrough of the game, and that's why we're going to take a look at the game itself and how to get started and how to build a successful initial colony. Now, today we're going to be covering the first setup of the game before our first colonists arrive. Now, it's very important that there's a couple things that we need to cover. Um, if this is your first time that you're playing this, I highly recommend not going for the new game button straight away. There is an easy start button that allows us to do a lot of really cool things, but thankfully the new game button, uh, we can basically take a look at what it actually does and then go to the easy start after that. So if we try to click on new game, we go obviously to our setup screen. And this allows us to take a look at what we have available to us. Now, if we go for the easy game, it's a 20% difficulty bonus. That means that we get a 20% bonus on top of all of our points. The points don't really matter. It's just so to making sure that you survive. When the easy game starts, we get a mission sponsor, which is the International Mars Mission. That means that our rocket is very large. Our colonists will never want to go home, which is a good thing. The food that we get per passenger on the rocket is times 10. This basically means that in the starting of the game, as well as the middle of the game, food is not going to be a problem. However, you need to keep track of this because it's very, very easy to run out of food in the late game. So make sure that you have enough food production around the middle of the game basically then our commander profile is a rocket scientist which means that we get a extra rocket not that we necessarily need to use that extra rocket in my personal experience i don't really have a lot of problems with that and on top of that we get a bonus tech which is co2 jet propulsion which unlocks the shuttle hub and long range transportation now the thing with the shuttle hub is we're not even going to use it until at least the mid game so this is not really all that important. It's still nice to have. It's an additional tech, which is kind of nice. So let's go quickly go back and then click on Easy Start and take our first look at Mars. Let's see how many Earthers we can get in here and uh, then take it from there. Now, our initial goal is to create a, um, well, a colony. Well, a colony setup, at least. So... We are here, we're currently in orbit over the planet, and we have eyes on an area that we want to use our colonization stuff on, which is obviously really important. So we need to create oxygen, water, and power, and build our first dome. Now, in order to build our first dome, we're going to need to stay in orbit first and select our landing area. Now, this is very important because, well, we have four orbital probes and we have some resources on the ground. But we want to know what else is over here. So let's take a look here. So we can look over all these sectors. These sectors are in blocks set from uh, A0 all the way up to J9. And we can survey all of these with our probes. Now, we've already got a starting area selected. And if we zoom in here, we see that we have a little bit of regolite, which is our concrete source, as well as a potential m m mining source of underground metals. And that's going to be really important later on. However, orbital probes, we're going to need to take a look at this. Now, this area has high concrete uh, levels as well as metals. This is high metals and rare uh, other materials. Found. So that is good. So we found a rare material, which is the ex the high-end metals. Let's take a look here. We found some more concrete, which is good. We got two more probes. So we're already looking at this particular area. So we found ourselves some water. We found ourselves some metals. We got more than enough regolite to get our initial colony underway, as well as a couple of anomalies, which will allow us to progress through the text tree a lot quicker. Now we've got one more probe remaining, and we want to take use that on a area that is relatively large and may have some additional resources on it. So this sector has a high chance of metals and concrete. This has high, high chance of metals. Concrete in general is quite useful, but I kind of want to see what kind of water this is. This is a low-grade water supply, which means it's not that great. It means that the amount of water that will be pumped out is going to be relatively low. Now, the um, um, total volume of water is still pretty decent, but the stream of water that we're going to get is less. Let's take a look what else we can find. Um, let's take a look. Let's say over here Anomaly found some more water good this is a low grade water supply 11,000 liters and this is 10,000 liters 
So, it looks like we already have a fairly decent area to put our rocket down, which is good. We got some regolite here. We got some metals we can mine, two patches even. And let's put our first rocket on the ground on Mars to see what we can find. Let's go down there. Let's pause the game immediately because we need to do some stuff. We found some anomalies, we found uh, water, we've sa scanned a sector, we found additional metals. We need to select our technology. Now our first technology is going to be very important. We want to go for engineering immediately. Now it's very important to also note that the start of the tech tree, or the tech tree in general, is nearly completely randomized. You will ne almost never get the same techs in the same order. You will eventually get all through all the techs, but the total techs in uh, the order you get them is going to be different. Now we have access to Logi Fungi, which is nice. Robotics, which means that we can add more drones. Uh, we can get the uh, extractor amplification, which means that we can get additional materials from stuff. And also Mount Mars crowdfunding, which is actually quite useful. However, let's go for engineering and let's queue some stuff up here. And let's get social because of the 1 billion we can get additional for that. Let's unpause and let's look at our rocket as it comes down. We can also start another sector scan, which we can do manually. There we go. There is our rocket. It looks like it's based around a, uh, a, Fal a uh, SpaceX Falcon BFR, or a big Falcon rocket. And there we are. We're on the ground, and immediately we have three rovers. We got the RC rover, the RC explorer, and the RC transport. Let's pause the game for a second. So our RC rover, what does it do? The RC rover is basically a centralized area for our drones. What does that mean? It means that it is a uh, vehicle that basically controls all of our workers on the ground. And it does it within a certain radius, which is kind of cool. So as you can see, this is the radius that our drones can work in. The rocket also has a drone range because it's also a drone carrier. And uh, this is going to be our first setup. Now. Then we also have the RC Explorer. The RC Explorer basically looks at anomalies, anomalies at the ground. The RC Transport is purely to move materials around or, and this is far more important, harvest materials. So, first of all, what we're going to need to do, we need to go and get some power. We can build some large solar panels. And uh, considering the game is hex-based and these solar panels use up three tiles, we can do it like this. So, let's do it in a kind of useful spot where it's not completely in the way. Uh, we wanted to get it near the regolite because we were going to need to generate concrete. So let's do it like this. We hit a middle mouse button, it rotates, and now we can fill up the other tile as well. Let's build up three of these. We go to the button over here, the colony overview, we see exactly how many materials we have. Now right now, what our rovers will do, they will go out and start harvesting materials on the ground and we're gonna go and send those guys out at least we're gonna go send out this rover into an area so that they can start harvesting materials to build these solar panels it's good stuff this also means that we can start planning out our our initial robo hub which is found under the infrastructure button we get one for free which is pretty good and we want to set this down in a fairly reasonable location so let's build it here over the rocket. And we currently do not have any power yet, but this will allow us to get a decent amount of coverage when it comes to um, our drones. Let's also get some power plugged into that to our uh, upcoming uh, solar panels. So now right now we've got three power queued up as well as a drone hub. So let's pause the game and immediately go to our resupply button. Let's get a cargo rocket out there. Let's get to go to the prefab building and let's get air. First of all, another drone hub, a moisture evaporator. We need a fuel refinery and a polymer factory. The sterling generator, machine parts factory and electronics factory. We currently do not need. It's a little bit too early. The polymer factory is going to be very useful for us to uh, at least generate some initial polymers on the surface of the planet and the fuel refinery will allow us to refuel our rockets a lot faster um let's get another explorer let's get another transport let's get a bunch of new orbital probes 10 of them will be fine and let's get a bunch of additional drones maybe around yeah we can lower this to about eh, about six 
And let's get some some metals on the uh, well, metals we have enough of really. Uh, polymers maybe. Let's get some additional orbital probes. We do want to fill up the cargo capacity on the spaceship. So the RC Explorer transport. Let's get let's get let's get a bunch more drones. There we go. Wow, that's a lot more drones than I thought we would have. Uh, there we go. We still got 24 billion remaining. So let's launch this, and this rocket will now go to Mars with additional resources to build up our colony initially. Now we can hit the plus button and speed things up a little bit. Make sure that we get our pacing going on because if we play it on the normal game speed, it, the game can get a little bit on the boring side. But as you can see, our fleet of drones are currently moving around, getting medals, and making sure that we have materials. Now our initial, now our initial goal is, is to build a dome with a decent amount of buildings to support achieved. our uh, people. Uh, so what we need is, uh, if we need about 155 concrete, about 30 metal, uh, 20 polymers, and around 50 power to get all this stuff rolling. So do you are currently not plugged in. Let's go and fix that. Let's get a power button in there. And let's get this extended and have all this power rolling out. We're also going to extend this power line into this here general direction. Just so we can get a little bit more coverage for our future drone hub, which is going to be built right around here. And there's a good reason why we're building it right there. And I will get to that once we uh, basically have all that available. We also have our first anomaly There's researched. To the wow, we get a bunch of really good resources out of this. A veritable treasure trove of undiscovered <clears throat> knowledge and wonder. Basically, we so can get... You know where to look. Basically, we can get additional technologies from um, these anomalies. So right now we have access to adaptive probes, which is good. Um, advanced Martian engines, which will make our ships be a bit more efficient. Explore AI, productivity uh, training, and soil adaptation. So we can go into the research screen and you will now see that we have all this stuff available. Uh, the Explorer AI is actually really good because it gives us additional science. As well as the adapted probes where it means that our probes are going to be cheaper. And productivity training which we currently do not need. And soil adaptation which we currently also do not need. So let's queue up mm, Drone Swarm and Explorer AI. What we're also going to do, actually, considering the amount of money that we have, let's outsource some of our technology to Earth. It's going to cost us $2 billion, but we get 10,000 additional uh, science for it in total. That's 2,000 per soul. Now, a soul is 25 hours of in-game time, which, is, uh, which makes life rather useful. It is currently also nighttime, which means that the, uh, the drone hub is not operational because we're currently using solar panels on everything. How can we fix this? Well, we can first of all build some additional solar panels if we really want to. We don't necessarily need it right now. Um, but we kind of want to go with this little setup here, this pattern of building solar panels in a little bit of an efficient way. So all of our drones are currently moving out. The one thing we also need is we need some sort of storage, which is completely straightforward. So what we need is, uh, so you are going to be built over here, which means that you'll overlap to over here. So we need to get our storage up and running. So we need all of these depots. Now I'm building these in the middle of this and this. Why? Because if we build another drone hub over here, it means the drones that are coming out of this drone hub will have access to the same resources that the drone hub of this one will have. So what we can do here, we can start building our initial um, resource hub. So two metal, uh, two concrete. Uh, food, of course, because we do want to keep our population happy. Food, polymers, uh, which we are going to need as well. Uh, electronics, which we will need a little bit less of, but in the late game, they be do become a bit of a... Um, an issue, but we can now have all of our stuff ready. We can also build a universal depot, which is 30 units of every single resource. I personally prefer to do individual platforms because we can store a lot more. Also, we have a bunch of advanced resources in our spacecraft that can be dropped in. Basically, all those drones will now drop all those materials out. 
Okay, you are nearly full, so that is our transport. And you, the RC Explorer, have the ability to find yet another resource. Okay, so our solar panels are online, which is good. Okay, that's the RC Transport doing its thing. And if we zoom out on the map, we can see if we hover over a sector, what kind of resources are available in that sector. Research so, complete. buildable area, underground metals, which are metals that we currently cannot access, as well as the water that is in that sector. And more importantly, the metals that are uh, all over the ground, which is now 61. Now, the reason why I'm bringing in an additional uh, RC Transport is to be able to very quickly get all those metals and put them down onto these platforms and basically use them in our colony a little bit more efficiently. The additional RC Explorer that I ordered is going to be very useful to get these additional anomalies out of the way uh, a lot quicker. And the uh, new probes that we're bringing in will allow us to scan the areas a lot more efficient as well, showing more anomalies and for every anomaly, we get an X amount of research, which will bootstrap our research production. So it all kind of runs in tandem with each other. It's uh, it's rather cool. All right, so let's get some concrete going. Concrete is the cornerstone of our uh, of our setup. So we have, initially fruitless, oh, we recalibrated the operating spectrum. We found a large uh, water and deposit. And voila. Excellent. So we found a large water deposit over here, which is very high. Which means that uh, we are not going to be worried about water anytime soon. Because we're going to get a large amount of water out of this water deposit very quickly. Let's send this bad boy over here to this uh, remaining anomaly and take it from there. Let's get a couple of concrete extractors going. Um, let's put you over here. And then have this guy over here. And we're going to build a third one. Uh, the third one is basically... Uh, we want to get as much concrete as possible as quickly as we can. Because the amount of concrete that we're going to need in the game is rather large. Let's put it that way. So we're going to build all this stuff. Uh, it's going to cost us six of these machine parts. Which is a, it's a significant amount, but it's nothing that we cannot handle. And uh, we can import those from, those from Earth anyway. We also just re research March's crowdfunding, which gives us an additional $1 billion. And sadly, we did not get access to low-G habitation, which is the most... I personally feel the most optimal thing that you can get. Basically, it allows us to get access to a really advanced residential building relatively early on. So our spaceship is now in orbit. Let's land it. Let's... let's uh Let's put it right next to its uh, its little brother. There we go. So we'll get this down, and the robots will uh, start unloading the necessary materials. Now, as you can see, it's nighttime, uh, which means that we don't have enough power, because obviously our solar power uh, does not operate analyzed. at night. How can we fix this? We can fix this relatively easily by adding power accumulators to our colony. So let's extend this power line a little bit. Let's hit B and go to our power accumulators. And let's just build four of these. Good. So we got enough metal, I think. Okay, so that's my new RC transport. So let's go and immediately send that guy out to uh, grab new materials. You are pretty much done. So we can go and unload resources by clicking here and then clicking on the platform. And we got two explorers as well. We want to keep this RC rover fairly close to the base because we're going to need to send this guy out in case uh, anything breaks down out in the field. And let's also take the opportunity to use our new ro uh, our new orbital probes to find ourselves some new anomalies and maybe some new resources nearby. One anomaly found, two more found, two more found. Nothing in these rocks. Sadly, we have two more probes remaining. Okay, let's see, what would be a good spot? Yeah, this one. Found another, ooh, found high-end uh, metals. That's going to be good for our late-game colony. We're going to need that to generate a large amount of electronics. And over here, uh, do we have anything more? Nope, okay, we'll just queue up our scanners and take it from there. So, our basic energy and metal supply is now online, which is good. 
So you are charged up. You need a little bit of charge, though. So we're going to send this uh, RC Explorer back home and click on one of the power lines to make it charge up. We're also going to send our other Explorer out there to find new anomalies and new things to find. Good. I believe we also have a new drone hub as Research complete. expected so let's put it right here in this spot and this allows this drone hub to get access to all the resources in the center area as well and that's exactly what we want so let's get this going let's plug you into the system and that should be it for now good so explorer ai is coming online so we for every rc explorer that we have we will get a hundred additional resources. now we have two of them which is great um, Lodry Hydrosynthesis is the polymer factory. We don't really need that. Magnetic filling, uh, filtering, oxygen production increases, which is obviously something that we need as well. Uh, Logi Fungi. Let's do the advanced Martian engines, because that will require less resources in order to uh, get everything back into orbit. Basically, we need less fuel in our spaceships in order to get off of this rock. Now, our spacecraft will automatically regenerate their fuel because of our in because of our rocket scientist perk. And uh, that's a good thing. So, one building is offline because it's currently not plugged in. That's fine. Our energy is in the plus. That's good. We are generating a lot of concrete. So, that is going fine. So, right now we are... Uh, what are we producing, actually? Not, not that I can see just yet. So we also need a dumping site now. So a dumping site, what it does is it creates an area Anomaly for analyzed. our metal that we don't really need around the uh, around these sources of concrete. Now, we want to keep this relatively far away from the actual regolite source because once these are done, these buildings... Uh, we will deconstruct them and then build over the remaining amount of regolite. There's more to the barren. Oh, Logi High Rise. There it is. And decommissioning protocol. So, what we want, and let's go and cancel this then and put on Logi High Rise because this is our first building that we can get that is larger than our basic building and then re queue stuff uh, after that. Good. Okay, so that is good. So let's get some pipes up and running. Now we can build pipes right on top of these power Research lines, complete. which is what we want to do anyway. Explore AI is done. Let's just click you away. So we're going to build these pipes, and this is basically our. Um, this is going to. This is what moves our power, our, our water, our oxygen around, which is obviously something that we need. And we have two moist evaporators. That we can use they produce one uh, base water uh, per unit now we've ordered an extra one from earth because by the time our dome comes online we will need at least two water we will place this in a relatively decent position say right around um, that's not a good spot because we want to build our first dome around this area well, actually we can build our first dome up in here what's the better water supply this is the high one that's the average one. Let's actually take a look here. Uh, okay, we would never have overlapped that anyway. That's a shame. So, we're going to build our first dome right around here, I would guess. That gives us more than enough space to do other things. Good. So, what we'll do is... Uh, let's build another water connection out to somewhere. Uh, like down in here towards our power supply and then build our at least one moisture vaporizer here and we'll build the other one on the other side of the colony good all right so we got a power problem that was to be expected because it's nighttime and we do not have enough accumulators to get all that stuff online which is unfortunate uh, also we do not have anywhere to pump our water to so what we're going to do is we're going to start building some water towers so these water towers, we only need two of them right now, and those will uh, basically supply our uh, colony with water, or at least they will be pumped full with uh, water. And in case we have any water-related issues, there will be the backup solution there. But this particular setup, we don't really need the additional moisture evaporizers. 
but still it's still nice to have as an illustration because you're not necessarily going to be starting on a map with this much resources right off the get-go good all right that's all set up so we're currently on soul day four we are moving along very nicely research complete Logi high rise is complete that's going to be our first living space in our colony uh, that that particular living space will have less comfort for our colonists, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, this guy is now done getting medals. Let's send you out in here. And you, let's see if we can find some more medals sitting around. There's 43 in this sector, so let's send you out in there. This RAC Explorer is completely charged up. Let's send you out in here to do the science thing. And you... Let's send you out in here to find some of the mysteries of Mars. Now, the only reason why I have two RC Explorers, as I already mentioned, is to bootstrap our science production. Uh, which is something that we are going to need. Okay, so we have 69 stored. We are, hourly production is 50, but our hourly demand is only 31. So our power accumulators will slowly charge up, hopefully to the point where they are going to get enough resources. All these drones are not doing anything at the moment. That is unfortunate. Let's assign these to another another hub by right clicking on them. There we go. We had a drone. We got we got too many drones on the ground at the moment. But eventually we will be able to use that. In the meantime, we've got 51 concrete. We quickly go towards our domes. We need 80 concrete in total to get that going and 20 metal as well as 10 polymers, which we are lacking at the moment. We may need to bring in an additional rocket. So let's get another cargo rocket going. Let's get additional polymers. We got more than enough money at the start of the game. Yeah, seven, like 80 polymers, more than enough. Let's get some additional machine parts in there as well. Uh, some more orbital probes so we can scout the planet. Uh, metals and concrete we do not need. Do we need any additional prefab buildings? Maybe some more drone hubs. Those are always useful. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. And then let's uh, launch this rocket. So there's the polymer factory and the fuel refinery that I ordered. And the fuel refinery obviously is very important. Research complete. And those are free, obviously. Cool. Anomaly so we analyzed. so we get a we are now analyze an anomaly. We get a thousand credits for free. Good. So let's send our, our next uh, rover towards our next area. Okay, you are full. So let's send you towards here to get additional materials up and running. In the meantime, our drones are just you know they're just chilling around, trying to get additional resources. Uh, this Great power setup is never going to happen. Ooh, Martian steel. So there is these breakthroughs. These are random techs. Uh, basically, they can be a whole assortment of techs, and you will never get the same ones in the same game uh, gameplay. So this is a breakthrough. That is this technology that is unique to Mars. So if we get a breakthrough, we get a bonus. So the earlier we get that, the better. Let's see whether or not this is a good one. Lowers metal costs for building construction by 25%, which is great. It's a great bonus to have. And let's get... Mm, storage compression decommissioning protocol is going to be important later on and let's get magnetic filtering good all right so this is going to be the center of our colony we kind of want to keep the industry away from this so we're going to build the industry in this particular area so let's get some pipes out in here so let's say around into this area Get some pipes going. It's still within the range of the drone hub, thankfully. And let's also put a power cable below that. There we go. So it's just min-maxing that stuff. In addition, uh, the we also got two free sterling generators, which basically uh, give us some additional power whilst on the surface of the planet. They're free, so just plop them down anywhere. Uh, it's very useful to have. They generate 10 power each. And uh, especially during the nighttime, that's going to be really, really useful. So we got TN10 online analyzed. right now. Uh, we are at minus 16 at the moment. So that is that is going fairly well. We got two additional water. We currently do not have any oxygen though. We're gonna need to fix that. 
by going to life support and selecting the Moxie. Now the Moxie generates two oxygen, and on paper that should be enough uh, to power the colony. Um, well, at least generate enough for the needs of the colony for now. So one Moxie is going to be enough. And let's also get two oxygen tanks. We'll just place those right here. And those will start filling up those Sector oxygen scan. tanks. We also got some new techs, low-G turbines, and subsurface heating. So low-G turbines is to improve the strength of your wind turbines, something we do not have, as well as the um, subsurface heater. Now, the subsurface heater is not something that we need because the subsurface heater is not something that on the starter levels is really all that important because we do not have any freezing temperatures here. If you're playing in one of the polar levels, then you're going to need those. I'm also going to place down a sensor tower just so that we can scan things a little bit quicker. Good. Yeah, so as you can see right now, we're just scanning. We're not getting any bonuses from any, um, any sort of tower. And let's just casually continue scanning our way around, finding more anomalies as we go. By the time our rocket arrives, we should be able to uh, finish up all the remaining material, uh, remaining anomalies, and basically get ready for the next batch and get more technology and then move from there on as our first dome is coming online. So we got 103 concrete and 71 metals. Now the basic dome, uh, we could already build. Uh, we were just waiting for the polymer to arrive. And that's coming in on our third rocket as it comes in. Feel free to mess around with the rockets. If you, if you feel you've made a mistake, you've got more than enough money to just bring in an additional rocket. Besides, you got five of them, um, at least on the starter mission, if you want to play an easy time. So we got more than enough concrete. There's our polymer. Good. Uh, our RC rover is on standby. We don't really need this RC rover here at the moment. So what we're going to do is, and this is a little trick, we're going to go and find an area that has... Ooh. The RC explorer investigating the anomaly accidentally released a pocket of high pressure gas. A random anomaly. That means that uh, one of our rovers has Research accidentally complete. tapped into an area, so we may get a bunch of negative effects. Our rocket's here. We got our first breakthrough on Sol 5. That's good. And our rocket is on, ready to be brought into from orbit. All right, cool. Let's just put it down found right next to the resources. Of life. Okay, and we can we have an anomaly where basically native life has been discovered. We can get either money or we can get more applicants. At the start of the, the game, considering the amount of money that we have, I highly recommend going for more applicants. We'll talk about applicants in episode two when we start to select the people that we want to bring to Mars. Because that's going to be really important as well. So... Quick overview, we got power in the plus, we got oxygen in the plus, we got water in the plus, we got basic resources in metal, we got more than enough concrete, food is not going to be a problem yet, rare metals is not going to be a problem yet, fuel however is a problem. So let's go to our production tab and build a fuel refinery. Now, it's very important at the start of the game that we keep our colony very compact, mainly because the range of our, of our drones is rather limited. So, keeping all this stuff compact is rather important. So, we're going to build this fuel refinery here. And then those fuel is going to be dropped off over there. How we're doing power-wise, actually? Eh, we've got a decent amount, I would say. So, we got 710 stored. That's going to take us easily through the night. And that's exactly what we need. So, our basic, all of our basic supplies for the colony are basically ready to go. So let's get a basic dome up. Speaking of the word basic, basic. So basic dome. Where do we want to build our basic dome? Our very first dome. Well, our very first dome is going to be very important because it is going to illustrate where we want to have our stuff. Now, in normally, we would want to have the rare metals. Rare metals is very important. We want to get as many of those as possible because we can get resources from Earth by exporting those, but also it allows us to generate a material which is the electronic parts which is 
the biggest bottleneck at the middle of the game. We're not going to build our first dome there, however. That's going to be the location of our second dome. No, our first dome is going to go next to these underground metals that are right here. So let's build our basic dome right here on the edge near the power and the water in the range of the dome right next to the supply base. And let's build our very first dome right here. And we have all the resources that we need, but instantly, well, we're, we're, it's nighttime, so that's the power issue, I guess. And while that first dome is going, let's zoom out, because we have gotten some additional probes. So let's scan for some new stuff. Okay. Uh, no really big things to be found. A couple of anomalies. So let's uh, queue all of these up. And how are our rovers doing? They are doing just fine. So this one needs a little bit of power. So let's send this bad boy back home Sector scan. to get a Anomaly little bit of resources. Found. Wow, Sector H2 has got 102 medals in it. That is a staggering amount. RC transport number one can be brought back home because he has enough medals. And RC transport number two is currently unloading more medals from its local base. Now all of our drones are now badgering along, happily along the way, trying to... Uh, Basically, service the colony as well as they can. One of our rovers has low battery power, so as soon as he's unloaded his materials, we're going to go and charge that up. Do the same one with the other one. Pipe leak reported. Oh, and there's our first pipe leak. Don't be worried about pipe leaks or drones, considering the small amount of space that we're having in our colony and considering how compact everything is, that any pipe leaks are going to be taken care of, especially considering they will only be taking place in between these two drone hubs, which means uh, that they will be serviced very quickly. All right, cool. So you're empty. That's good. You are almost recharged. Good. So let's send this RC rover into the wild yonder and let's go and explore a little bit. So you're going to go over there. You're currently doing a research one. And then we're going to send you over to this little key one over here. So that's a new technology, potentially. Further analysis, something interesting. This is a research goal anomaly, so it gives us additional research. This is to move research the story along. Complete. And this is to, uh, or maybe give us some research bonuses. Who knows? And this is going to give us new anomaly technology. Analyzed. Okay. So let's move you over here. Uh, did I already send? Where did I send the other one to? Well, you're going over here now. So our RC transport needs to continue getting materials. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Where is that sector with all the ridiculous amount of metals in it? It's got 106 over here. That's insanity. So let's send you over here. No active research. And let's send you over there. We've got no active research because we're racing through the tech tree. And there is low G engineering. That's for the advanced dome. And we kind of want that already because the starter dome is not that good. So let's go and uh, get the Logi engineering for the medium sized dome up and running. So once we have got that, we want to make sure that we can get all the base technology. So uh, Logi hydrosynthesis is good. Uh, drone hub is good. Logi drive is good. And we should possibly go for some food as well. So there we go. So that's being taken care of. Our dome needs some more concrete. That is to be expected. But overall, I think we're in a pretty good spot. So let's take this RC rover out on an adventure, shall we? So the RC rover is really good, but right now in the context of our base, it, it doesn't have a lot of use. So what we're going to do is we're going to send it over here, then hit B. Go to storages and build a metal depot in the middle of nowhere. Then the RC rover is going to camp scan. right next to it. And all the small rovers will pick up all the metal deposits, put them on the platform, and then we can send the RC transports to pick all that stuff up. There you go. So Anomaly has been researched. RC3 does We've not have any materials. We've collected geographic data at the site of the Anomaly. Okay, and a thing has popped up. We can get either $200 million funding, which we do not need, for moisture vaps, which we do not need either, because we have more than enough water. Let's go for two drone prefabs, because the more drones we have, the better. And in addition, what this means, it means that we can... We have four of them now. Um, so let's place this one right there, still within range of our resources. Perfect. And then you Anomaly analyzed. 
we will place right there. Because then we have a decent amount of coverage for our drones to do whatever they need to do. So you can connect to this one. And then we will connect this one down through here, if we can. Can we take you off yet? Not yet. But basically, we can start to pre-build all of our stuff for underground rare metals that is going to go on our first medium dome. But uh, that's all in the future. We do not need to worry about that just yet. Let's also get this polymer factory up and running we've been alluding to since forever. Because that's what our people are going to be working in. So the polymer factory right there. Perfect. Our rocket is ready to take off. Bye-bye, home sweet home. Go back home, Earther. You have no you have no space on Mars. There we go. There we go. Milestone achieved. And a rocket is taken off from Mars. Excellent. So our overnight uh, charging of uh, overnight charge of power is more than enough to keep us uh, in a pretty good spot. I'm just a little bit concerned about the lack of additional power that we have. So what we're going to do is, let's grab these power cables, and this is going to be incredibly unsightly, so my apologies for that. There we go. Let's just plug that in. And we'll take the opportunity to build some more power. Because power is something we always need more of. Especially in the late game. And power is... Brownouts is something that we cannot really afford. There we go. I'm not building any wind turbines because of the maintenance that it needs. It needs machine parts for maintenance and concrete as well, uh, which is not something that I want to spend money on just yet. Do we have any other free buildings? I've got two more drone hubs, which I do not need at the moment. How are... How's the rest of the site going? Yeah, the, the colony seems to be looking well, and there is our first dome. Let's give it a name. Let's give it a cool name. Cool name. There it is. And there we have it. A very first dome. Seven souls in. And now it's time to deck out that initial dome with what we need. Now, as I talked to you earlier about the zero-G high-rise, or the low-G high-rise, is that this is an excellent starter building, but it's gonna give the colonists a little bit less comfort, which means they will not be too likely to have children early on, which is obviously something that we need. So let's get an apartments in there. It's uh, gonna cost us a decent amount of resources. Uh, 75, well, 10 polymers and 35 concrete. Let's get that going. We want to have a nursery. We want to have a playground. And we want to finally put in the following. A infirmary. There we go. And let's get a grocer in there as well. Let's see, what is on my, what is on my list? Hydroponic farm. Yeah, grocer, infirmary, nursery, playground, diner. This is the diner. No, I don't have the diner yet. Okay, so we'll put the diner in. One moment. And then finally, the hydroponics farm. So, with that going, it's time for us to basically wrap up this episode. We've built our first dome. We've built our first base structures in that dome. And... Next time, we're going to finish up the structures inside the dome itself and then invite our first founders to Mars. Hope that you learned something here today and uh, that this will help you to bootstrap your first steps on the Mars. Once again, just to quickly recap, make sure that your drone hubs are within range of each other and have your initial resource base in between them because it's very important to have so. You only need one moxie at the start of the game. Uh, make sure that you build enough power accumulators to get power overnight. Because while wind turbines are cool, they are not all that practical. And make sure that you get enough water towers. Also, that second rocket with the 
RC rover to discover more stuff, as well as the transport to get more materials out, and finally the RC rover uh, set up down here to get more materials going as you play along with the game. Let's uh, wrap up this episode here by sending out this final RC rover out into the wild yonder to research one more thing, and then we will take it from there. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, eat shutter. <laughs>